welcome to another episode of Handloader TV with me, your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we have something a little bit different and special to present with you. We have from Ehler the System 89, a very interesting system, and we're going to talk in great detail and explain how it works, the setup, and everything you need to know about working it. And to help me do so, we have a good friend, Rick Jamison, here. Now, Rick, you probably don't need any introduction. Anybody who's read the magazines should know who you are. But uh, why don't you take a moment to tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started, maybe, and some of your experience you've had over the years. Okay. Well, like most of you, I've had a lifelong interest in shooting. Uh, my main interest have been in hunting. I sold my first article in 68 or 69, but professionally, I got my real start here right here at Wolf Publishing Company in 1973. <laughs> uh, during that time, I was editor of NBRSA News, the National Bench Rest Shooters Association publication, shot bench rest competitively for a short time. And uh, since that time, I've, I've uh, done a lot of experimenting and hand loading. My main interest in shooting are just the technical aspects. I have a uh, Ehler Model 43 PBL that I've used ever since it was available <laughs> to hand loaders. I also have a System 83, which is the the unit that is in widespread use throughout the United States, well throughout the world, in most of the ballistics labs. Uh, I have a great variety of test barrels that I use to capture pressure and velocity. And the System 89 is a great unit for it, it, for measuring time of flight. A direct quote from Ken, Ken Ehler is that time of flight is everything. Based on time of flight can be determined downrange wind deflection, drop, energy, velocity, every all the other numbers. And with time of flight measured to a great distance, it, it's, it's, it's very accurate and, and you can use that to derive ballistic coefficient. That's very interesting, and that's really the the main selling point of this system, I think, is finding those ballistic coefficients for a given bullet. So I appreciate that. What do you say we pack this stuff up? We'll take it out to the range, and you can show us how to set it up. And really, it's a relatively simple setup. Yeah. And uh, we'll then test some loads and some factory ammunition and see what kind of numbers we get. What do Sounds you say? Sounds good. Sounds real good, Jeremiah. Perfect. <laughs> so as you can see, we're out here on the range now. We've got a few things set up here. And Rick's with us. Rick, you want to walk us through some of the setup that we did to make this all work? Sure. The, the setup for the System 89 is really pretty simple, as you can see. There's just a bar on the ground made up of PVC pipe with four microphones. Uh, when the bullet comes across, from downrange, our, our firing point is down there. The bullet will come across here toward the target. When it crosses this bar, each one of these microphones will pick up the shock wave of the bullet. The shock wave will give the computer the arrival time for time of flight, plus each of these microphones being spread apart like this will triangulate the position of the bullet where it passes and it'll give you group size on your computer. Uh, the thing of it is, with this uh, array, there's a 10-foot spread on the bar. So you have a virtual target 10 feet wide and basically 10 feet high to shoot into. So it's pretty easy to hit the target uh, with the bullet. It's going to pick it up. Uh, the advantage of knowing where the bullet is, number one, is group size. The other, the other thing is, it's really good practice, for example, to see how much the wind is worth. You fire one shot, see how much the wind moved your bullet. Uh, so it's a great training aid from that standpoint. You can come out here on a windy day just to see what it does. Uh, the other thing with the, uh, the Ehler system is that you can shoot all day without coming down range. Uh, when you're shooting long range, you really don't want to come down range. All the target is is an aiming point. The, the, the microphones will tell you where your bullet's going. So 
these, each one of these microphones is connected to a radio over here on a tripod. Uh, the, the four wires are connected at the bottom here. As you can see, A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, D. And this radio is synchronized with another radio at the firing point for time. So when the bullet passes the chronograph start screen, it starts the clock. When the bullet passes the microphone, it stops the clock. And the two radios are synchronized for time to give you exact time of flight and also to triangulate the position of the bullet. Uh, in a nutshell, that's it for downrange on the Ehler system. It's uh, pretty simple, pretty easy to transport, not that difficult to set up. Now I think it only took us about, what, uh, maybe 10 minutes to put all this together, if that? Yeah, something and like that. that would save you, I mean, the amount of time it'd save you going back and forth to the target alone makes it worth it. Yeah. So, very cool system. This, this system will give you the bottom line on your load development, on your rifle, uh, on so many things. It's, it's the, the culmination of all the efforts that went into your shooting, whether it be uh, rifle accuracy or hand load consistency. Uh, the Ehler tells you exactly what's going on. Okay, so what I did, I started with the complete uh, bar put together just to show you the idea of what we were talking about. I wanted to show you how easy this is to transport, how easy it is to set up. It's simple PVC with, with T-joints. You just slip these in, these come apart that easy. Uh, Ehler <clears throat> supplies the, the microphones uh, and the T-joints with his kit and these, these joints are pre-drilled, so all you have to do is slip the bolt through, tighten the wing nut. Now these 40-inch these sections of PVC pipe have to be cut. They're, they're not uh, supplied by Ehler. You can buy these at your local hardware store, and all you need is three 40-inch sections. And uh, Ehler, Ehler supply, supplies the rest. Now, you can put the reason they're a T-joint is that you can add a, a short extension here of this PVC pipe to keep the, the bar oriented, the microphones oriented. Here, there's no wind today or anything, so it's really not necessary. But uh, that, that's the reason for the T-joints. So uh, again, it's really easy to set up and transport. Ehler supplies everything in this, uh, this box over here. Uh, so you can put everything in this box. You've got tripods for the chronograph stand. You've got two radios. This is the radio. Uh, both, as I mentioned earlier, I think these radios are interchangeable. One is attaches to the chronograph sky screens, and this to, to your laptop computer. This one attaches to the downrange bar. Um, now, I'm, I'm showing this close to the bar. In reality, when you're shooting, this downrange radio will be moved well out to the side so there's no danger of shooting it. Uh, so uh, the kit is, is really complete. I just can't say enough about this System 89. It, uh, it's, it's a great training tool for, for the effects of wind on your bullet because you shoot and you know exactly how much that wind was worth as far as deflection on your bullet because it displays immediately on your computer screen where the bullet went. Uh, that's just another added advantage. So uh, the, near, uh, the near radio, this one here that connects to your laptop is, uh, is like I said, just attached to a pretty much conventional sky screen setup that plugs in to the same receptacles uh, that the bar plugs into. Again, the radios are interchangeable. Uh, this is the antenna. I'll have to attach another antenna for the computer end. I'll do that later. And uh, we'll get into the, uh, the chronograph setup in, in a few minutes. Okay, we, we uh, run through the downrange setup. Now we're gonna go to the near the rifle setup. Uh, most of you are familiar with this. It's pretty much a conventional, it is a conventional Ehler sky screen setup. 
Ehlers supplies a four foot bar in the kit, which is the minimum to do this kind of testing. It's really the minimum to get a reasonably accurate ballistic coefficient. I rely on a high numbers of shots to nail it down. I shoot 10 shots with a four foot spacing. If, if, uh, if you'd like, normally I've, I've always used a 10 foot or a 20 foot spacing, much more accurate. Uh, with the Ehlers system, you have the start screen, the stop screen, and you have the proof channel. The proof channel is, ex is exactly at the midpoint between the start and stop screens. And when I shoot, I try to make sure that the, the proof channel has no more than single digit variations from the total velocity. Uh, and that way you know that your shot is valid. If you're, if you're shooting and you're your proof channel is almost zero or close to it, no more than single digit feet per second off, you know that that's a valid shot. Proof channel is a great deal. Uh, it's a very valuable tool. Um, Ehler makes systems for the government, for the entire shooting industry. He's very knowledgeable. And the hand loader gets the advantage of all that technology and all of the accuracy and precision built into the Ehler systems. It's, uh, in my opinion, using the Ehler system with the proof channel, especially with the longer spacing, it's, it's far and away more accurate than, than uh, smaller units. Okay, so the, the difference uh, when it comes to using the System 89 is that these plug in to a radio. Here's the radio, laser reflected paper, antenna, the, the start screen goes in event A, the midpoint goes in event B, the stop screen goes in event C. And then it's positioned like this uh, for the best reception. Ehler supplies these tripods. He supplies uh, the tripod units for the chronograph. He supplies the tripod units for the downrange and the near, uh, the near setup. This cable on the near end hooks up to a laptop computer to record all of the data. This, uh, the computer and the box uh, are, are the chronograph box. You don't have a conventional, uh, a box like you do in a conventional setup. With the System 89, this is it. Uh, it's a great system. I love it. It's reliable. I've used it in high wind. Uh, wind where it was whipping these like this and it still never missed a shot. Uh, very reliable. That, that's, that's it in a nutshell. You know, one thing I found from experience is that it's really important to get your, your laser beam exactly where you want it. Uh, and so with this loophole uh, laser rangefinder that Ken Ehler supplies with his system for an additional cost, uh, it, it, this, this laser rangefinder is calibrated with a very narrow receptive beam. Plus, it's calibrated to be accurate to a tenth of a yard. But in order to get that kind of accuracy out of it, you need to be really steady on your target. So I tape it to this really solid tripod and I range it like this. And right now, the target is on a grassy hillside. This, this laser will not even pick up unless I lock onto that laser, that laser reflective paper. When I lock on, when it does, it locks on, it gives me a reading, and I can move this all around and come back. It'll give me exactly the same reading every time. Turns out this target is 840.9 yards from the chronograph start screen. You align from, to, from the chronograph start screen to the line of microphones to get an accurate ballistic coefficient and time of flight. So we have the 308 benched in here on a Stuckey's sturdy shooting bench. Targets downrange at about 840 yards. And we have a load here that we worked up on our load development video on this 308 Nosler M21 rifle. And the load is a 175 grain Sierra Match King with 44 grains of Alliant Reloader 15.5 powder, CCI 200 primer, and Peterson cases. 
So we're gonna go ahead and test this load using this Ailer system. And we're gonna see how the BC compares to the stated BC. And we'll see if we can uh, get a group size measurement using this system as well. So let's see what we can do. I've got a couple of people here spotting and watching the program for me, Rick and Don. So we all set, ready to go. All right, send one more. Oh, they're telling me it's a good group so far, so I better not mess it up. <laughs> One more. Okay, so we're at the firing point again, and uh, I'm using a load here developed by Jeremiah, 175 grain match king, shooting from a, a bench that I use all the time myself in the field. It's really well constructed by Stuckey. Uh, and uh, we're shooting at 840, I believe it's 839.7 yards, uh, measured with the uh, laser rangefinder, the Lupo laser rangefinder, that's uh, specially calibrated with a narrow beam and uh, uh, we're going to see what it does at this distance.
So we've gone ahead and swapped over to our 28 nozzler, and this is another load that we developed uh, in the load development video we have on the 28 nozzler. You can also see this load being used in our 7 Rem Mag versus 28 nozzler video. It's using a 175 grain Berger uh, Elite Hunter bullet, and the target's at the same distance of about 840 yards. And we're going to go ahead and run this bullet across the chronograph and see what kind of ballistic coefficient we get and see what kind of group we can get using the System 89. And away we go. Spotter says we're good. There's our five rounds. So we have an Altera Arms, six millimeter Creedmoor benched in now. And we have yet to do a load development video on this particular rifle. So we're shooting factory ammunition. This is Federal Gold Medal Burger uh, match grade ammunition with a 105 grain Burger hybrid bullet. Targets down range at about 840 yards. And we're going to go ahead and see what kind of BC we get with this bullet using the System 89 and what kind of group size we can record. So let's get started.
So we're back from the range now after running a bunch of different ammunition and different cartridges through the system. Um, all of our data is compiled here on the computer, so of course you'll be able to see this screen. We have our first target pulled up here, uh, and this was with the 308 with 175 grain Sierra Match King with that new Reloader 15.5 powder. And what we have here is a ton of of data. And Rick, you want to help me go through some of this here? Oh, sure. Uh, right here on the left, we have the, the number of shots fired. This one, uh, the System 89 is really kind of interesting in that it will accept uh, probably an unlimited number of shots dependent upon computer capacity. I know it'll accept at least 100, a 100 shot string for an average. That, <laughs> that feature is exceptional. In this unit today, we've got five shots that we fired here. We can see uh, the number of the round. The second column shows the velocity. The third column is the discrepancy in the proof channel velocity versus the total velocity. Uh, the, the next number is time of flight. It's like 1.2 seconds to the target. We're shooting at, uh, at 839 yards. Uh, uh, it shows the BC on each shot. As you can see, BC is not a static number. It varies with the individual shot, just like velocity. Mm -hmm. It shows the velocity at the target, then it shows the horizontal and vertical dispersion of the, of the shot impacts. Uh, down below, we have averages on all of those numbers. We have the, the average, the standard deviation, the fastest shot, the slowest shot, and then off uh, it, and that is on all of the numbers. And then to the right, it shows group size and radial, uh, radial standard deviation of the group. So this five shot group at 840 yards measures 16.9 inches. <laughs> I'll take that, you know, <laughs> I shot this particular group and it's, uh, you know, 840 yards with a load that I worked up to get a 16.9 inch group. I'm not too uh, too unhappy with that. Could be a that's little good, bit. That's good shooting for that distance. That's, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to, to shoot a group like that. It is, it is. And uh, you know, there's always room for improvement. It gives me room to work with. And this is just with the 308, of course. And then if we want to look at our other targets here, we click the end replay and we go to replay, replay test from file. And this is kind of hard to uh, convey without seeing, so it's great to be able to share the screen like this. Another test we ran was with the uh, 28 Nosler. That one's a little bit of a kicker. We'll open this test up, and we can see here, just like you were saying, Rick, the five shots and the velocity here. And then you can see the time of flight, and that's the big thing in calculating the ballistic coefficient of a given bullet, correct? That's correct. That's correct. Time of flight is everything. And a flyover BC here, and ooh, group size got a little bit worse on that one. <laughs> I blame the, the, the rifle. No, it's definitely me. Uh, trying to control the recoil on that one is a little bit uh, trickier. But overall, the amount of data that this system collects without any effort on the user's part is really great. I mean, you simply oh, yeah. shoot through it and you get all of this information right here. And it's saved on the computer for you to review at a later date. And last but not least, we shot the uh, six millimeter Creedmoor with factory ammunition. Let's see here. There's our five shots. Velocity at the chronograph. Is that what the AC stands for? Yes. At chronograph, so at the at the muzzle of the firearm. Proof velocity, time of flight. All this recorded with relative ease. Now on this, one thing I want to point out here, our proof velocities are really too high. Mm. Uh, Something happened, apparently, the chronograph screen spacing was off just a little bit. So these, uh, th these velocities are, you know, probably need to be reshot.
I just noticed that. Proof channel velocity should be single digits. Mm, that's a good point. And you can see all this while you're in the field, so you, if you do need to reshoot it, you have the computer there, you can see your information, and go ahead and retest. That's correct. And then once we're back at the range, there's also some other things that you were uh, saying we could go ahead and look at. If we'll look at uh, that first 308 target, you can really break down the data. And I'll go ahead and pass this mouse over to you now. Okay. And you can show us some of the other features and changing the drag functions and all the capability that is built into the software. Okay. So first of all, these proof channel velocities here, as you can see, they're single digits. Uh, there's, a, there's a decimal behind them, but they're 3.5, 1.7, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that indicates that these velocities are probably valid velocities. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting, you can, you can pull up the target, and over here on the left, you can see a representation of the target. A, B, C, and D are the location of the microphones. These are the positions of the shots. There's actually five shots in this group. Two, two of the shots are in one hole. Uh, this white band indicates the sweet spot. To, in order to put the bullets in this sweet spot, I find that the target height needs to be about chest height in the field. Mm -hmm. And that'll put the bullets in the proper location to hit the, the white band. Uh, okay, so another thing that's interesting is that, as you can see, this bullet hole is blue. It's highlighted in blue. Mm -hmm. That corresponds with the yellow highlight of the data. That data corresponds with that bullet hole. If I click on another bullet hole, say I, I click on this one over here, as you can see, it highlights shot number two. That was the second shot in the group. So... One interesting feature is that you can uh, you can eliminate that bullet if you want. For example, this bullet is a little out of the group. Supposing you, you have three shots clustered tightly, but two out of the group. So you can temporarily omit that shot if you want. As you can see, that bullet disappeared. The group size also changed to 16.7. If we eliminate this one also, that's shot number four. Group size is 10.8. <laughs> you, can, you can replace those groups simply by clicking on it again, highlighting it, and then clicking. Uh, that's just kind of a little interesting feature. One of the great features of this system is that, as you can see, we, we, ran, uh, <clears throat> we ran this one using the G1 drag function. With the G1 drag function, uh, uh, we'll replay the current test. As you can see, it's 479 is the G1 BC. Okay, supposing we want to change the drag function to the G7. I simply go over here, click on G7, and replay that same set of data replay the current test, and now we have all G7 BCs displayed. <laughs> the reason that we can do that <clears throat> is that the system 89 is measuring time of flight, and time of flight is the number from which BC is derived. That's dynamic BC based upon actual firing from the individual load in the field, not, not the static BC printed on the, on the manufacturer data. Again, BC is just like velocity. It will vary with each shot. And the BC is also highly dependent upon, like, the velocity. It can change with the velocity, air density. I mean, there's so many factors that go into calculating BC. And in plugging all that information into that this system here, it kind of opened my eyes about how dynamic that number actually is mm -hmm. and how much it can change. Exactly. So, well, Rick, I think that pretty much covers the entire system. We've walked through the setup, the programming here. I think uh, we've done a pretty good job so far. And <laughs> I I've, think so. I've learned a lot from you just listening to you talk about it and 
the setup and everything. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming down here and, and spending time with us and shooting with us, and teaching us about the system and putting yourself in front of the camera. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. I've enjoyed being here. Well, good. We want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Let us know if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those in the comments section below. I do my best to read and respond to every one of those. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Rick, thanks so much for everything. Thank you, Jeremiah. <laughs>